Hey guys, Chris Gamble of Chris Gamble's Analog Life here, and today I'm going to be starting a new series, not so analog and not so electronics-y actually. Um, I've recently made a decision that I want to learn more about the rest of the product, not just the electronics, but I also want to learn about the mechanical side of things. And so I've started a journey into learning and teaching myself how to machine metal, how to machine plastics, wood, and everything else like that. And this is kind of the kickoff on all of that. So, I've got myself some new toys. You might be able to see, uh, well, this is actually a different, but I've got a new background um, for video making. But I also have bought a CNC milling machine and kind of all the stuff that goes around it. So today I'm going to take you on a little journey on what I've started out with. The, the milling machine itself isn't here yet, but kind of everything else is. And this is going to be an intro to all the other stuff and, and what it's going to take to prep the work area. But I'm hoping to kind of share my experience with you because, I don't know, it's, I, I know it's not going to be easy. I mean, hell, this is a, this is a whole other section of engineering, right? I'm, I'm leaving electrical engineering and I'm moving into mechanical engineering. So, I know it's not going to be easy. I know that. And I'm literally looking for some feedback. I'm looking to share my experience. So if other people you know, also decide to jump into this kind of thing, they'll have a reference point. And, I don't know, I just think it's going to be fun. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a whole new journey. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's going to be... I, I feel like it's, it's necessary these days. I think... It's no longer that you can just be siloed into one type of engineering. I can't just be an analog engineer anymore, right? I always talk about analog, but it can't just be analog anymore. E even further beyond that, you know, just analog electronics still need digital electronics to talk to it. And even digital electronics need analog electronics to create signals and, you know, create oscillators and everything else. It's moved beyond that now. You can't just be an electrical engineer anymore. You have to also know something about packaging because you have to have a, a holistic design uh, methodology. You have to know what you're doing and know what kind of final product you're going to be making in order to really make a good product and, and really just make good stuff. So I'm going to try and teach myself that. <laughs> we'll see if that works. I don't know if it's going to. But uh, so yeah, this is going to be the first part of the series, um, just kind of figuring it out and looking at what I need and what I've already bought and cleaning up my workbench and getting it ready for this new stuff and I hope you enjoy it. You can see my normal workbench back there but uh, today I'm actually going to be starting my cleanup job for my CNC machine and that's going to actually be a CNC milling machine that's going to be located on my other workbench the one that came with the house and that's kind of a mess right now it's kind of Looks like this. <laughs> so I'm going to be uh, cleaning this thing off. I'm going to be, you know, refurbing it and hopefully cleaning it off. Interestingly, I found out, well, I didn't find out. I knew this. My, my grandfather actually was in the tool and die business. He gave me a whole bunch of stuff, all of his old, a lot of his old, uh, his old gear. So that's actually going to get reused. But I thought I would share that before I started the cleanup job and, and kind of finally get going there. Ignore that terrible insulation job on the uh, water heater. But uh, yeah, other than that, let's get going. All right, day two, and oh, let me get this light on over here. I actually spent all night last night cleaning up, and look at that. That's crazy. <laughs> it's actually like kind of clean. So, oh yeah, it's still crappy over there. But uh, I'm thinking the Kennedy toolbox, the I have a machinist toolbox actually from previous. I'll go here lengthwise, then the tub here. Um, there'll be a tub to possibly do flood cooling. I got the big light up here, of course, and then you know computer, and then leave some extra workshop space, and still need to uh, mount the clamp and everything. So, and you know get rid of some other crap. But yeah, starting to starting to shape up a little bit. It took me a long time to get to this point, so hopefully. Hopefully the momentum will keep going. Well, you saw before that my bench is real dirty. I've got it all cleaned up. I've got uh, a huge-ass monitor installed. I've got the computer in the back, 
all my old tools over here. Still need to install some things. I've got this uh, bench vise I need to install for cutting cutting raw stock. And uh, but yeah, uh, it is exciting because today, now that it's all cleaned up, it's a couple of days later, and some wearing different clothing. Um, I got in. The controller, I got the motors, I got the cabling, and I got a bunch of hand tools, and I'm just going to show that stuff off. This will be kind of the intro video, just about what is all coming before the actual mill shows up. The mill should be shipping a little bit later this week. But I want to show it off, I'm real excited, and I'm, uh, yeah, so. We won't be able to see everything yet, but it's kind of, like I said, it's just getting started here. So, let's look at it. Okay, so this is kind of the haul. First off, uh, this is a big tub I got from Lowe's. Um, it's just a masonry mixing bucket uh, for mixing up cement. Uh, eventually, I'm going to try and do flood cooling on this thing. Uh, I saw a couple posts about that. So I just wanted to have it here for when I get the mill, I'll just install it right into this and I can build a shield around it or inside of it even. Um, that Even if I don't end up flood cooling, then I can also just have something that will contain the chips and something that's easy to, to clean so that I don't have them flying everywhere which is a big concern because you know sometimes I'm stupid and, and don't wear shoes but yeah so this is the stuff I got a bunch of its from Amazon a bunch of it is from uh, Soy Generis I think is how you say it um, but let's look at the Amazon stuff first so just a uh, dial indicator and then a magnetic base and this is <laughs> and also I should premise preface a lot of this stuff. I'm not really sure why I need all this stuff yet. I'm sure when I get to that point, I know that it sounds really novice to say that, but I am really novice here. So um, <laughs> I was just kind of going based on recommendations and uh, stuff that people said I'd probably need, and it wasn't too bad on pricing. I mean, I've kind of had this number in my head for how much everything would cost in a bulk amount, so I've been trying to just remember that and ignore all the, the piece costs because it does start to add up. So dial indicator, um, you actually push in here and it actually changes, it shows you how much distance you've traveled. There's actually two dials, there's a big one here and then a smaller one that actually keeps track of total rotations. Um, I think this is for actually for calibrating the mill and I'm pretty sure about that because I've seen a couple of videos on that and hopefully I'll be doing a couple of my own. But yeah, then the actual uh, magnetic holder. Uh, let's see, a bunch of squares for actually measuring how square something is. Uh, <laughs> this is the one where it's like people told me to, and I'm like, eh, all right, well, whatever. Uh, distance, whatever this was called, this is gauges, I think. And I, at first, I, I ordered this, and I was really confused because I knew it was for, for measuring different sizes. And I was just, I opened it up, and I'm just like, oh, what the hell? I got ripped off. And then I realized that it, the sizes here actually refer to the thickness, and this is actually pretty cool. It's got a bunch of gross stuff on here. I'm guessing for reducing corrosion, but. It actually shows, this is the uh, inches and then millimeters, and top one, so this is 21 mils. It's actually the thickness. Uh, <laughs> yeah, should have figured that one out a little sooner, but uh, <laughs> eventually I got it, and it's really cool, too. I mean, it, it goes down and uh, goes up in thickness, rather. Where is it here? Here we go. This one is 1.5 mil, or thou, if you're an Aussie, um, but look, look how thin that metal is. So that is one... Uh, 0.38 millimeters or 1.5 mils, as PCB people often say. So I'll, I'll probably get the, the that stuff all confused. But it, so it goes from that all the way up to uh, what was it? 25 mils, I think. I can't even see now. Yeah, this one's 25 mils. Yeah, and that's as big as it goes. So so good for measuring distances and getting inside and seeing you know actual what can what can slide in there. So cool little tool. I like that. Okay, now the big stuff. Uh, obviously, power cables. This is for plugging in. Uh, USB cable. I'll get to that in a second. These are communication cables. It's uh, DB9 on one end, and then a custom Molex plug on the other. And these are all from Soy Generis. Uh, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, and then that plugs into the stepper motors. And these are these are already fabricated just showed up like this it's a sure step 166 ounce inch um, it's actually this was recommended for the take mill that I bought so I just went for it I mean honestly I, I was going for quality and service on, on a lot of the stuff I bought this is my first mill I know that it has a lot of uh, resale value and that's honestly that was most of the stuff I worried about everything else is going to be me learning and going along so uh, this plugs into the end here I already tried plugging in and 
on one. It plugs in great. Uh, it's already wired up for the correct connection on this side. And so then this will actually bolt onto the mill. There's a coupling that then bolts onto this. And then that actually drives the table back and forth. And that whole thing will be sitting in here. And hopefully it'll all fit. I actually, I'm pretty sure this is the right bucket size, the, uh, the container, but we'll see. Okay, and now the actual controller. Boy, so this is this is actually the reason I went with Soy Generis. Um, they put together a simple looking front panel here, uh, just an on switch and an e stop. And but if you turn it around, this is actually where all the good stuff is. Uh, there's an auxiliary relay you can hook to, and then this is a gecko controller, which is what I plan to use no matter what. Um, so this has two things here. One is the Gecko controller, and that's actually what the DB9 hooks into. And then this is actually what you know translates from uh, code from the computer down to uh, you know actual pulses that go to the stepper motors. Um, but then outside of this, I also wasn't sure this computer back here um, actually doesn't have a parallel port, and I was sold on the benefits of getting away from that. Now I, there's actually as far as I can tell, there's there's ups and downsides to using the parallel port. One is the, the downside is speed, but the upside is uh, I believe it's real time control. This is actually USB based, and then there's a controller inside here. It's the Mach 9 uh, Smooth Stepper, I believe it's called. So this actually will run off of uh, USB. That means the computer will actually send it like batch commands, and then that will send that actually translates to parallel. Uh, commands and then that sends parallel commands to the, the gecko. The gecko is always running parallel. Nice thing about this though, I really like that it was all on the back panel and I can, if you know, if say that doesn't work, say the USB is broken, I'm just going to pull this thing off, install a parallel card and, and be off to the races or just switch out the computer and get an older one that has uh, the parallel built in. The smooth stepper also has a second a second parallel port which is nice. There's a couple of limit switches and stuff like that you can you can cable out to with this thing. I left that for later. It wasn't too expensive, but the sensors were, so I just said, eh, I'll deal with that later. I need to learn the, the basics anyways. Uh, but the other reason I did this is because it's already wired up, and, and I might pull this thing apart. Uh, we'll see. But there's um, a couple power supplies in here. Power supplies don't really scare me, but the thing that scared me was having the connections hooked up wrong, um, Either because not because of manuals or anything like that, just because it I don't want to deal with that stuff right now. I want to get to actually cutting stuff as fast as possible. So this is a nice package, a little bit more pricey, but uh, it's got an extra heat sink in here. Um, really, it's just it's just what I was looking for, so I decided to go with it. So um, yeah, I'm I'm excited with this so far. I'm going to actually hook it up and hopefully be able to show you some some motor driving here in a second. Uh, we'll see how fast that setup is. But uh, yeah, I I like everything so far. It's it's getting very very exciting. Oh, there was one other tool. Let's see. Where did I put it? Ah, there we go. The key to any machine. I actually started lo loving these for just PCB work too, having these around. But these are actually really nice. These are like 13 bucks on Amazon. So, you know, kind of a, a cheap China buy, but this is pretty close to the the feeling of a uh, a pair of Mitiyoto or whatever that one is, the Japanese company. So this is uh, definitely a budget buy, but got to have a nice pair of uh, vernier calipers in order to measure stuff. So I've already been measuring these gauges and stuff, and, and that's been a lot of fun. So yeah, uh, really excited so far, and hopefully we'll get some steppers going. All right, so I moved the tub off the bench because I just want to have easy access to this, to this thing. Um, you can see by these cables, these cables are actually really long. These are probably, I don't know, two, three meters long. Yeah, that looks about right. Um, yeah, I'm going to be able to put this thing actually over here, which is good because if the CNC machine is here, then chips are flying. Even even when the shield is there, it uh, it could be bad. So, and actually, I realized today that I have to even uh, cover up the fan on the computer so they don't get metal and wood chips sucked into that thing. Um, but yeah, got it all plugged in, um, powered up fine, got the USB cable running. You gotta install some pretty simple, you know, Windows drivers. I'm running Windows. You know, a lot of people told me to run, uh, what's it called, EMC2 or Linux CNC. I think it was renamed to. Uh, but I decided to just go with what I had and what's fastest. And if something goes wrong, I can always do it again later or try something different. And that would be with the parallel port, like I mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna actually click around on here a little bit. This is called Mach 3. This is the other option to, than Linux CNC. This is the uh, Windows Windows program. Uh, it seems to be really well liked throughout the community. 
So I just went with it. Like I said, just trying to get to the cutting as fast as possible. And yeah, so I'm going to try and actually get this thing powered up. I already installed the drivers. There's actually even an XML file that allows you to... Uh, ha the, the, the vendor of, of the box, the Soy Generis people, actually have all set up already for the Tag mills. So it's really easy. I like that. Uh, so I'm going to try and get it going, and then we'll see if we can't move some stepper motors. Okay, so I've got it all started. Um, it says when you start it up, because of the, the motors pull a little bit of power, um, I've already done it once, but uh, it actually says to start up with the e-stop on. You can actually, maybe you'll see the little red blinky here. Um, it does note that the emergency thing is running. Um, so I'm going to start it up and see what happens. And I'm not sure if you can hear that, and I'm not sure if this is normal either. None of these are moving yet. Maybe I should put a sticky note on them or something. Uh, oh, there we go. Look at that. I just happen to have sticky notes on here. <laughs> um, yeah, so they're making kind of a weird noise. I, I, I don't know if that's just current. I hope it's all okay. Um, I guess we'll find out. Um, but, yeah. So, let's put that on there. Let's see if we can move these things. And, uh, yeah, hope, hopefully it's, it's okay. <laughs> I don't know... Uh, I don't know what it might be. I'm, I'm guessing it might just be idling current, or maybe just the... Uh, let's switch that color. Um, it might just be... I, I, honestly, I'm not sure. I can't even tell if it's all of them. They're not vibrating. Like I can't feel any vibration or anything, which is what my first guess was. Uh, there's no emergencies here. So, let's see if we can get the step set up. Okay. Uh... Oh, I guess I should have uh, <laughs> should have figured this out more first, huh? Uh huh. All right, well I'm gonna play around with the software a little bit, and we'll see if we can <laughs> we can't get these uh, moving. Okay, so I figured it out. Uh, it turns out I, I had to actually hit reset. That's why it was blinking. <laughs> Duh. Uh, but uh, I got the jog mode on now, and let's see. Um, so I don't know how to do the Z, but it's pretty obvious that this is X and Y because if I hit up, hey, hey, we've got movement. <laughs> it goes the other direction, and then, uh, yeah, we can go the other direction on the, which one is this? I can't even tell which one's which. This is probably X. Yeah, this is probably Y. But, yeah, making the uh, the, the noise that we all expected. Um, I, I need to play the settings, obviously. Uh-oh. That didn't sound good. I'm going to turn these off, but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully everything's all good, and we'll get going. Cool. We'll see you next time.